Hello beloveds and welcome back to my channel. I realize I haven't made a video for 2020 yet. I haven't said it like that. 2020. <laughs> um, I haven't made a video yet because I have had a crazy start to this year. Firstly, Priya, my little doggie, had a back injury and I was staying with her 24-7 helping her through it, which was really a whole new kind of challenge for me. And then I got a flu right after, and I am just getting over it right now. So here I am, and I thought, what better way to start this new decade than a quick Q&A? So I asked some of you to send in some questions on my Instagram today, and I will be answering them. How do you love yourself when you've felt like you've, when you've never felt like you've mattered? Hmm. This one hits home for me because I grew up feeling like I'd never mattered and I grew up never being told that I mattered. This was a whole new concept to me in my 20s and I can relate to how difficult that is, that feeling. And, you know, it's an epidemic in humanity right now that, you know, feelings that we don't matter, feelings that we aren't enough, feeling that our existence isn't a miracle, which it absolutely is. And that's why I love the path of non-dualism, which teaches us that God or source or whatever word you would like to use for that, our higher selves, are with, is within. So it's not something outside of ourselves, but the divine is within us and not only us, but everyone else. So this means that inequality doesn't it can't ever exist. Of course it does on this physical plane, but we are all of the same essence and no one deserves to be here more or less than you. It doesn't matter if you are a multi-billionaire or you're a celebrity or whatever it may be. These are all roles we are playing out in this physical world, but we are still of the same essence. So no one is more important than anyone else and meditate and be with yourself and really prioritize self-love and self-care and you'll I promise you'll come to this realization once you cultivate that self-love and that self-awareness then you start to look around and realize that you deserve to be here and these are affirmations i'm using too like this self-love journey is a lifelong journey because of our society today. So even though I'm doing this work and I'm sharing this work with others, I still have to be on top of it and I have to commit to it daily. So I'm doing the affirmations right now of I am deserving, I am enough, I am grounded. Even though I've been working with this for many years, I still deal with imposter syndrome where you feel like you're not enough at times or you're not worthy to be where you are or you're not worthy of the life of your dreams, which is insane because that's what we were born for. So cultivate self-love and self-awareness and you will come to realize that we all deserve to be here and we all matter. From my heart to yours, you matter. <laughs> What do you think about Jesus? Hmm. I love Jesus. Um, I also love Muhammad and I also love Buddha. And yeah, I love many great teachers who have come before us. And my perspective is a little different as I've traveled to over half the countries in the world, 65 countries and studied different religions. Um, as an observer, I've never, I've always been very open-minded. I remain in a loving, open space towards all religion. All religion that isn't extreme. When it goes extreme, that's when the issue is. The issue itself isn't the actual religion and the message behind it because most religions teach love. That is the basis of it. Of course, it gets tainted over the years depending on what that individual group or church wants to get from its people if they want to control. Of course, people have good intentions, but over hundreds of years, this tends to happen depending on the culture and the government, etc. So that's a whole topic on its own. But um, my perspective is the way that I approach the different countries that I travel to. So when I'm in different communities, I absolutely love meeting people my age and talking with them and learning from them. But what I'm seeking is to find the elders of that community because they are the wisdom 
wisdom keepers. And I've learned so much being around Aboriginals and just, you know, older people of the community. So the way that I see Jesus and Buddha and these teachers that have come before us, it's like great elders, they're our ancestors and they're divine beings who came to teach us. And I don't see myself attaching to one, just like I've been traveling for 12 years and I haven't attached to one country. So I like to just be open to everything. And the way that I look at these teachers is that I can learn from each of them and I don't want to attach to one because then that limits me from learning what the others have. I think Jesus has some incredible teachings and I did grow up Catholic going to a Catholic church and what they were teaching back then of Jesus's teachings were very different. I don't know if it's because I've evolved since then but the teachings and the message is very different than the way that I perceive it now. So I see a lot of Tantra in Jesus's teachings and um, really coming into the divine within you and becoming an empowered being and a non-judgmental being. I love him. So, yeah. Am I single or married? <laughs> I'm going to answer this because I just got asked this probably more than any of the other questions. And I'm asked it often. Um, so I just turned 30 and in the last 10 years, I think I've been single for eight of those years. And I have never really been active. In my early 20s, I wanted a relationship, but I, I've been so focused on my work and my career and my mission on this planet since I turned 20 that I just, it's never worked out. And I've been moving around so much that it really hasn't been my focus. But I have always remained open to special epic love if it comes into my life. Um, right now, at this point in my life, I feel so whole and fulfilled and full of joy, joyful, um, on my own. I'm really enjoying being single right now, um, more than ever, actually, and it's funny because when I turned 30, I thought I would be feeling this pressure to be in a relationship, and I'm actually just really content where I am, but I always remain open, so. Do you care what's done to your body when your soul leaves it? And if so, what are your wishes? Well, thank you for asking. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever asked me that before. Um, I did study biology in university and coming from a scientific background and my mission here is to really serve humanity as much as I can. So I would definitely donate my organs. Um, yeah, I don't, other than that, I don't care that much. Um, I would just, you know, my existence on this earth is to help as much as I can. So if donating my physical body when I'm done using it um, will help others, then I will absolutely do that. What advice would you give to girls in their early 20s? It's so weird because I'm not used to being 30 yet. I'm like, I'm in my early 20s though. I'm actually 30 now. <laughs> Yeah, I think just enjoy it and be present and don't put so much pressure on yourself. Be really, mm, be gentle with the process and with yourself. Coming from my experience, I was really like, I need to figure it out. I need to find a partner. I need to, you know, reach all these goals and do all these crazy things. And now, now looking back, I'm like, you know, I still enjoyed it a lot and I went on tons of adventures, but... I could have just taken that pressure away, but also my story is so that I can be here sharing that with you now. And also a big thing is, that was for me, um, don't let others define you. It's so important to just not give a shit what other people think. Really that's where like, so much of my suffering ended when I came into that realization and I stopped letting others decide who I was and telling me who, you know, who I was because it takes time to figure out who you are. But just know that these outside sources, whatever they see in you is coming from within themselves and has absolutely nothing to do with you. How do you stay so fit and healthy? So I've been up on a plant-based diet f since I was 15 and I started going to the gym when I was 11 by myself. Um, I used to overwork myself, my body when I was younger. And then I came into a balance eventually and Right now I do yoga and I have a kitchen which is so exciting because I don't usually have a kitchen when I'm traveling. 
So I love cooking, I love healthy food, I love treating my body well. Health has always been a top priority for me and I mostly just do yoga, eat as clean as I can but with some indulging because that's important too. And I also do some body weight exercises right now because I'm actually having a huge project that I'm announcing in a month that is going to include everything I've learned in my life up to this point and that includes a ton of workout videos, a ton of yoga videos, a ton of meditation videos, literally everything, meal plans, tons of stuff. Anyways, I can't talk about it too much now, but a lot of people have been asking me to do more practice videos, so I promise that they're coming, a ton is coming soon. And I'm just gonna leave this video at that because my camera has died. I got a new camera and it has some issues, I think, so I think I need to send it back in. I've really enjoyed answering these questions though, and as always, I appreciate you guys so much. Um, thank you for following along and for being interested in my life and my message, most importantly. I love to share here and I love to connect and yeah, a lot of deep appreciation coming into this year. Thank you, thank you. If you have any other questions, comment below and I'll do my best to get back to them. Sending everyone tons of love and blessings and happy new decade.